Free Radical Theory of Aging, Wikipedia Audio The free radical theory of aging states that organisms age because cells accumulate free radical damage over time. A free radical is any atom or molecule that has a single unpaired electron in an outer shell. While a few free radicals such as melanin are not chemically reactive, most biologically relevant free radicals are highly reactive. For most biological structures, free radical damage is closely associated with oxidative damage. Antioxidants are reducing agents, and limit oxidative damage to biological structures by passivating them from free radicals. Strictly speaking, the free radical theory is only concerned with free radicals such as superoxide, but it has since been expanded to encompass oxidative damage from other reactive oxygen species such as hydrogen peroxide, or peroxynitrite. Denham Harmon first proposed the free radical theory of aging in the 1950s, and in the 1970s extended the idea to implicate mitochondrial production of reactive oxygen species. Background in some model organisms, such as yeast and drosophila, there is evidence that reducing oxidative damage can extend lifespan. However, in mice, only one of the 18 genetic alterations that block antioxidant defenses, shortened lifespan. Similarly, in roundworms, Blocking the production of the naturally occurring antioxidant superoxide dismutase has recently been shown to increase lifespan. Whether reducing oxidative damage below normal levels is sufficient to extend lifespan remains an open and controversial question. The free radical theory of aging was conceived by Denham Harmon in the 1950s when prevailing scientific opinion held that free radicals were too unstable to exist in biological systems. This was also before anyone invoked free radicals as a cause of degenerative diseases. Two sources inspired Harmon, one the rate of living theory, which holds that lifespan is an inverse function of metabolic rate which in turn is proportional to oxygen consumption, and to Rebecca Gershman's observation that hyperbaric oxygen toxicity and radiation toxicity could be explained by the same underlying phenomenon, oxygen-free radicals. Noting that radiation causes mutation, cancer, and aging, Harmon argued that oxygen-free radicals produced during normal respiration would cause cumulative damage which would eventually lead to organismal loss of functionality, and ultimately death. In later years, the free radical theory was expanded to include not only aging per se, but also age-related diseases. Free radical damage within cells has been linked to a range of disorders including cancer, arthritis, atherosclerosis, Alzheimer's disease, and diabetes. There has been some evidence to suggest that free radicals and some reactive nitrogen species trigger and increase cell death mechanisms within the body such as apoptosis and in extreme cases necrosis. In 1972, Harmon modified his original theory to what became known as the mitochondrial theory of aging. In its current form, this theory proposes that reactive oxygen species that are produced in the mitochondria, causes damage to certain macromolecules including lipids, proteins, and most importantly mitochondrial DNA. This damage then causes mutations which lead to an increase of ROS production and greatly enhance the accumulation of free radicals within cells. This mitochondrial theory has been more widely accepted that it could play a major role in contributing to the aging process. Since Harmon first proposed the free radical theory of aging, there have been continual modifications and extensions to his original theory. Free radicals are atoms or molecules containing unpaired electrons. Electrons normally exist in pairs in specific orbitals in atoms or molecules. Free radicals, 
which contain only a single electron in any orbital, are usually unstable toward losing or picking up an extra electron, so that all electrons in the atom or molecule will be paired. Note that the unpaired electron does not imply charge, free radicals can be positively charged, negatively charged, or neutral. Damage occurs when the free radical encounters another molecule and seeks to find another electron to pair its unpaired electron. The free radical often pulls an electron off a neighboring molecule, causing the affected molecule to become a free radical itself. The new free radical can then pull an electron off the next molecule, and a chemical chain reaction of radical production occurs. The free radicals produced in such reactions often terminate by removing an electron from a molecule which becomes changed or cannot function without it, especially in biology. Such an event causes damage to the molecule, and thus to the cell that contains it. The chain reaction caused by free radicals can lead to cross-linking of atomic structures. In cases where the free radical-induced chain reaction involves base pair molecules in a strand of DNA, the DNA can become cross-linked. Processes DNA cross-linking can in turn lead to various effects of aging, especially cancer. Other cross-linking can occur between fat and protein molecules, which leads to wrinkles. Free radicals can oxidize LDL, and this is a key event in the formation of plaque in arteries, leading to heart disease and stroke. These are examples of how the free radical theory of aging has been used to neatly explain the origin of many chronic diseases. Free radicals that are thought to be involved in the process of aging include superoxide and nitric oxide. Specifically, an increase in superoxide affects aging whereas a decrease in nitric oxide formation, or its bioavailability, does the same. Antioxidants are helpful in reducing and preventing damage from free radical reactions because of their ability to donate electrons which neutralize the radical without forming another. Ascorbic acid, for example, can lose an electron to a free radical and remain stable itself by passing its unstable electron around the antioxidant molecule. This has led to the hypothesis that large amounts of antioxidants, with their ability to decrease the numbers of free radicals, might lessen the radical damage causing chronic diseases, and even radical damage responsible for aging. Numerous studies have demonstrated a role for free radicals in the aging process and thus tentatively support the free radical theory of aging. Studies have shown a significant increase in superoxide radical formation and lipid peroxidation in aging rats. Chung et al. suggest ROS production increases with age and indicated the conversion of XDH to XOD may be an important contributing factor. This was supported by a study that showed superoxide production by xanthine oxidase and no synthase in mesenteric arteries was higher in older rats than young ones. Hamilton ETAL examined the similarities in impaired endothelial function in hypertension and aging in humans and found a significant overproduction of superoxide in both. This finding is supported by a 2007 study which found that endothelial oxidative stress develops with aging in healthy men and is related to reductions in endothelium-dependent dilation. Furthermore, a study using cultured smooth muscle cells displayed increased reactive oxygen species in cells derived from older mice. These findings were supported by a second study using Lydig cells isolated from the testes of young and old rats. The Choksai ETAL experiment with Ames dwarf mice suggests the lower levels of endogenous ROS production in DW mice may be a factor in their resistance to oxidative stress and long life. 
Lenner et al. suggest NOx4 activity increases oxidative damage in human umbilical vein endothelial cells via superoxide overproduction. Furthermore, Rodriguez Manas et al. found endothelial dysfunction in human vessels is due to the collective effect of vascular inflammation and oxidative stress. Evidence Modifications of the Free Radical Theory of Aging Sasaki ETAL reported superoxide-dependent chemiluminescence was inversely proportionate to maximum lifespan in mice, wister rats, and pigeons. They suggest ROS signaling may be a determinant in the aging process. Mendoza Nunez ETAL propose an age of 60 years or older may be linked with increased oxidative stress. Miyazawa found mitochondrial superoxide anion production can lead to organ atrophy and dysfunction via mitochondrial mediated apoptosis. In addition, they suggest mitochondrial superoxide anion plays an essential part in aging. Lund ETAL demonstrated the role of endogenous extracellular superoxide dismutase in protecting against endothelial dysfunction during the aging process using mice. Mitochondrial Theory of Aging Epigenetic Oxidative Redox Shift Theory of Aging Metabolic Stability Theory of Aging Mitohormesis Effects of Calorie Restriction One of the main criticisms of the free radical theory of aging is the idea free radicals are responsible for the damage of biomolecules resulting in changes to the biology of the cell and thus organismal aging. Thus several modifications have been proposed to integrate current research into the overall theory. Mitochondrial theory of aging was first proposed in 1978, and shortly thereafter the mitochondrial free radical theory of aging was introduced in 1980. The theory implicates the mitochondria as the chief target of radical damage, since there is a known chemical mechanism by which mitochondria can produce reactive oxygen species. Mitochondrial components such as mtDNA are not as well protected as nuclear DNA, and by studies comparing damage to nuclear and mtDNA that demonstrate higher levels of radical damage on the mitochondrial molecules. Electrons may escape from metabolic processes in the mitochondria like the electron transport chain and these electrons may in turn react with water to form ROS such as the superoxide radical, or via an indirect route the hydroxyl radical. These radicals then damage the mitochondria's DNA and proteins, and these damaged components in turn are more liable to produce ROS byproducts. Thus a positive feedback loop of oxidative stress is established that, over time, can lead to the deterioration of cells and later organs and the entire body. This theory has been widely debated and it is still unclear how ROS-induced mtDNA mutations develop. Conti ETAL suggest iron-substituted zinc fingers may generate free radicals due the zinc finger proximity to DNA and thus lead to DNA damage. Challenges to the free radical theory of aging Afanasev suggests the superoxide dismutation activity of Kuznetsov demonstrates an important link between lifespan and free radicals. The link between Kuznetsov and lifespan was demonstrated by Perez ETAL who indicated mice lifespan was affected by the deletion of the SOD1 gene which encodes Kuznetsov. Contrary to the usually observed association between mitochondrial ROS and a decline in longevity, YETAL recently observed increased longevity mediated by mtROS signaling in an apoptosis pathway. 
This serves to support the possibility that observed correlations between ROS damage and aging are not necessarily indicative of the causal involvement of ROS in the aging process but are more likely due to their modulating signal transduction pathways that are part of cellular responses to the aging process. Brewer proposed a theory which integrates the free radical theory of aging with the insulin signaling effects in aging. Brewer's theory suggests sedentary behavior associated with age triggers an oxidized redox shift and impaired mitochondrial function. This mitochondrial impairment leads to more sedentary behavior and accelerated aging. The metabolic stability theory of aging suggests it is the cell's ability to maintain stable concentration of ROS which is the primary determinant of lifespan. This theory criticizes the free radical theory because it ignores that ROS are specific signaling molecules which are necessary for maintaining normal cell functions. Oxidative stress may promote life expectancy of Sonorabditis elegans by inducing a secondary response to initially increased levels of reactive oxygen species. This observation was initially named mitohormesis or mitochondrial hormesis on a purely hypothetical basis. In mammals, the question of the net effect of reactive oxygen species on aging is even less clear. Recent epidemiological findings support the process of mitohormesis in humans, and even suggest that the intake of exogenous antioxidants may increase disease prevalence in humans. Studies have demonstrated that calorie restriction displays positive effects on the lifespan of organisms even though it is accompanied by increases in oxidative stress. Many studies suggest this may be due to antioxidative action, oxidative stress suppression, or oxidative stress resistance which occurs in calorie restriction. Fontana ETAL suggest calorie restriction influenced numerous signal pathways through the reduction of insulin-like growth factor I. Additionally they suggest antioxidant SOD and catalase are involved in the inhibition of this nutrient signaling pathway. The increase in life expectancy observed during some calorie restriction studies which can occur with lack of decreases or even increases in O2 consumption is often inferred as opposing the mitochondrial free radical theory of aging. However, Barges showed significant decreases in mitochondrial oxygen radical production occur during dietary restriction, aerobic exercise, chronic exercise, and hyperthyroidism. Additionally, mitochondrial oxygen radical generation is lower in long-lived birds than in short-lived mammals of comparable body size and metabolic rate. Thus, mitochondrial ROS production must be regulated independently of O2 consumption in a variety of species, tissues, and physiologic states. Naked Mole Rat The naked mole rat is a long-lived rodent. As reviewed by Lewis ETAL, levels of reactive oxygen species production in the naked mole rat are similar to that of another rodent, the relatively short-lived mouse. They concluded that it is not oxidative stress that modulates health span and longevity in these rodents, but rather other cytoprotective mechanisms that allow animals to deal with high levels of oxidative damage and stress. In the naked mole rat, a likely important cytoprotective mechanism that could provide longevity assurance is elevated expression of DNA repair genes involved in several key DNA repair pathways. Compared with the mouse, the naked mole rat had significantly higher expression levels of genes essential for the DNA repair pathways of DNA mismatch repair, non-homologous and joining and base excision repair. Among birds, parrots live about five times longer than quail. Reactive oxygen species production in heart, skeletal muscle, liver and intact erythrocytes was found to be similar in parrots and quail and showed no correspondence with longevity difference. 
These findings were concluded to cast doubt on the robustness of the oxidative stress theory of aging. Verds The free radical theory of aging implies that antioxidants such as vitamin A, vitamin C, vitamin E, beta-carotene and superoxide dismutase will slow the process of aging by preventing free radicals from oxidizing sensitive biological molecules or reducing the formation of free radicals. The antioxidant chemicals found in many foods are frequently cited as the basis of claims for the benefits of a high intake of vegetables and fruits in the diet. Nonetheless, some recent studies tend to show that antioxidant therapy have no effect and can even increase mortality. Yet an obvious limitation within each of these studies was the use of synthetic vitamin supplements as primary nutrient sources. On a more promising note, a recent journal review suggested a probable inverse relationship between fruit and vegetable intake and the risk of developing cancer in general. Antioxidant Therapy Since many different substances operate synergistically in antioxidant defense, its complicated process may require more sophisticated approaches to determine if antioxidant therapy may benefit the aging process. Proponents of the theory claim that this phenomenon can be explained by hormesis. The addition of antioxidants can lead to a decrease of normal biological response to free radicals and lead to a more sensitive environment to oxidation. Furthermore, a recent study tracking the eating habits of 478,000 Europeans suggests that consuming lots of fruits and vegetables has little if any effect on preventing cancer. Calorie Restriction Biology of Aging